Now let's look at hydrostatic force on one end of the tank. So we still have our tank, which is four meters wide, eight meters long, and two meters high. It's filled with kerosene, which has a density of 820 kilograms per meters cubed, and it's only filled up um, 1.5 meters. So there's a little bit of a gap at the top, and we are ignoring atmospheric pressure in these problems. Um, just trying to keep it super simple right now. So the force on the end of the tank, and let's look at it'll. We're going to look at this end where it's the four meters wide. So if I pull off and just do a quick sketch of that, so I'd have two meters high and four meters wide. So it's four meters down on the bottom here, and my kerosene is only going 1.5 meters high. and the atmospheric pressure on top we are ignoring, but it is a two meter high tank. So looking at this, um, the idea here is that the pressure, the big deal, is that it's not constant. Um, so the pressure at the bottom of the tank, we calculated that, but if we were to go to a different depth, it would be a different pressure, just like they were talking about um, in any videos you watch, an intro or a book or anything will tell you that when you go lower in a swimming pool, you're going to have more pressure um, than if you're uh, more like in the shallow end of a swimming pool. And um, also a thing is with pressure, it's the same in all the directions. So uh, the book gives the example of the pressure at the nose and ears is all the same. And so the pressure at the bottom would be the same pressure pushing at the side. So the pressure we calculate at the bottom would be the same that's pushing out at the side. And so we're going to use that idea, just know what level we're at, figure out the pressure, and that'll help us figure out the force. So the big deal here is all these levels have different pressure. So we have some variable pressure. And whenever we have something that varies and we want to talk about it on a continuous level, that's when we have to bring in our calculus. So the pressure we had for our equation was rho times g times d, where rho is the density, which would be the kerosene, g is gravity, and depth is how far down we are. And that pressure will change based on the depth, so we're, we're going to keep changing depths. So I'm going to write out my um, ith slice that I want to look at. So let's just pull some random uh, rectangular slice on my sketch of the side end of the tank here. And that slice there is going to be the force that I look like. Look at the the area of uh, that is what I'm interested in. Um, so that's the big deal. So in terms of the level, that's not too bad. If I say, you know what, let's let x start at where the um, kerosene level is here, and go down a certain amount. I'm gonna erase that. 1.5, it's getting in my way. So let's say I go down to whatever level I want to be at, and we're going to call it x sub i star. And I say, okay, I go some down some depth of like x, and then I'm at some level x, what's the pressure at that level? So the pressure would be equal to the density, which for kerosene is 820 kilograms per meters cubed, times gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times the depth, which we don't know, we're just calling it x sub i star, and that's in meters. So again, put your units on. And so if we work out those numbers, we get 8,036 x sub i star, and the unit is pascals, but I like writing it out, so I'm going to put kilograms per meters times second squared, and that's a pascal unit. Now force, we saw before that, the force equation is equal to pressure times area. So we figured out, out the pressure, now we need to figure out the area. And that is the part that actually becomes um, the most challenging in, in these problems. The area I'm interested in is the area of my little rectangle I've drawn on the side of the end picture that I have made. So it's this little sliver rectangle so it has that little bit of uh, height or width, and that little bit of height of the rectangle, so if I just kind of pull off just that little bit of a rectangle, if 
for my i to slice, that's going to have a little height or width, whatever you want to call it, of delta x. Right? We have to give it some thickness, so we'll, we'll say thickness actually of delta x. But now I have to figure out what this, um, this width is here. This one is really nice because it actually doesn't vary at all. Because it's a rectangle, no matter where I put my slice, up here, down below more, it's always going to have this width of four meters. If it was triangular shaped or any other shapes like you're gonna see later, then you would have to talk about the variable width. In this case, our width stays constant at four, which is very nice for um, our purposes. So it's delta x meters thickness, four meters width, and so our area of the eighth slice would be four meters times delta x meters. So we can't say just eight this time um, because we're not talking about the bottom, we're talking about pushing up against the side. So we have this delta x. Now we wanna put it all together so our force at the ice slice is equal to the pressure at the ice slice, which we made um, simplified to 8,036 x sub i star kilograms per meters times second squared. And that's gonna multiply the area, which is four delta x meters squared. And then we can see, just to double check, always double check your units, the unit on this, one of the meters would divide into each other, so I'd be left with kilogram time meter over second squared, which is our Newton. So this is the Newton measurement, which is what we want for force. Now if we were to uh, write this as a Riemann sum, which the book wants you to do, and I think is a very, very good um, way to write this, and you'll have to do this on exams usually too, is we go from I equals one to N, of 8,036 x sub i star, I'm gonna take off the units now, times four delta x. And so if we added up all those little slices, we'd get the total force. And then if we take the limit, I'm not going to rewrite it, but if I were to put the limit in front of it, now we have the definition of an integral, and then it, we look back at our picture and go, well, what are my limits of in integration? So from uh, the, the level where I started X all the way down to the bottom, all the full liquid was 1.5 meters. So X starts at zero and goes to 1.5. So I have zero, 1.5, 8,036X times four and DX. And I didn't multiply the 8,036 uh, 8, times four yet, but you could do all that. So not a bad integral to work out, so I'm just going to put the answer. When you work this integral out, you get 36,162 Newtons. And so that would be the force pushing up against one end of that tank.